<coughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Berish here. We're holding Mishnah Berish Halik Aleph and we'll be learning today Mishnah Hashem, Daf Pei Hei Amid Beis. We're continuing to learn Hilchai Sperchis HaShachar. We were in the middle of learning the Halachis of Yishtabach, but it's really more than just the Halachis of Yishtabach. It's the Halachis of the Yishtabach point in Davening. The Halachis that pertain from the end of Az Yashir through the Bracha of Yishtabach through Kaddish and through Baruch Hu. And against that backdrop, we pick up on the very, very top of Pei Hei Omid Beis, continuing the words in the Ramah, the very first word here on the top of the page. Similarly, somebody who did not have talus or Tfilin available to him at the outset of davening, and they bring him talus and Tfilin between Yishtabach and Kaddish, Yochel Lahanicham, he could put on Talos and Tfilin at that point, or Aleihem, and to make a bracha on them. And the reason for this is, because we said yesterday, back on Pei Hei Ahmed Aleph, in the very beginning of Sif Gimel, we said that Hamasape ben Yishtabach Yoitzer, if somebody is mafsik and speaks between Yishtabach and the bracha of Yoitzer or Varechoshech, Avera he biyodai, you're not allowed to be mafsik at that point. However, the Mechaber said, And then the Ramah said, And so the Ramah already established here at the outset of Siv Gimel that even though you're not allowed to be mafsik between Yish, between the end of Yishtabach and the beginning of Berkes Kriyashma, for Tzarche Mitzvah you are allowed to be mafsik, and putting on Talos and Tfilin is Tzarche Mitzvah. Not only is it Tzarche Mitzvah because it's part of the Tzur of Davening to be wearing Talos and Tfilin, but simply put, it's really a mitzvah to wear Tfilin all day. So putting on Tfilin is certainly a mitzvah, and talis lesser is lesser of a mitzvah because remember tzitzis is not a chayvas haguf tzitzis is not a chiv that you must wear tzitzis it's only if you're wearing a begot of dalit kanfais then there's a chiv to put tzitzis on the begot of dalit kanfais but still it certainly is a mitzvah to put on tzitzis and it also is covered hatfila that you're supposed to be wearing a talus when you daven so therefore it's a mitzvah to put on the talus as well since putting on talus and tefillin are certainly a mitzvah, you're allowed to be mafsik to put them on between Yishtabach and the beginning of Berchus Kriyishma with a bracha. Now, let's take a look here in the Mishtabura. Mishtabura is cut in Yod Aleph. V'chein mishaloi dechol zehu tzarech mitzvah. Alkein muta lahafsik lachesh agamar Berchus Yishtabach. Is cut in Yod Beis ve'viuloi. And they brought him talus and tefillin. Now, the Mishtabura is medayik. In the words of the Ramah, the Ramah says, Somebody who did not have Tzitzar 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 And they brought it to him. The Ramah does not say who the him is. And the point being that the Ramah does not differentiate between anybody davening in the Minyan or the Shleach Tzibur. So this din seems to apply equally to the Shleach Tzibur and to the uh, tzibur that are being mispalel says the Mishnah is cut your bays bein liyachid u bein lishleach tzibur. Either one of them could be masik between yeshtabach and the beginning of yoytzer are to put on the talis and fill. Ba'afal pi dignai hu letzibur lahamten. Even though this is going to create a certain amount of tircha de tzibura because the tzibur has to wait for the chazan to put on his talis and fill. Since this is considered he didn't have them before, he has them now. Certainly he has to be wearing his tefillin when he says Kriyashma, otherwise he's made a dusheker ba'atzmai. So there's a big tzarech to put on the talus of tefillin now, therefore it's mutter. Now, earlier, yesterday, we learned that if something makes you um, be mafsik, between um, between Yishtabach and Kaddish, then really you're supposed to say a few psukim of psukim de Zimra before you say Kaddish. 
Because remember, we learned yesterday that the Kaddish has to go back on something. The Kaddish is supposed to go back on Psukim of Shevach Vaido to the Rabbeinu Shalom. So now, if you had to be Mafsik after Yishtabach, how is the Kaddish connected back to Psukim de Zimra? Says the Mishnah over here in our case, this is not a problem. Ubazer, ain't Sarek HaShleach Tzibar Lach Sevaloim Psukim. In this case, where the Shleach Tzibar is being Mafsik, after Yishtabach, in order to put on his talis and tefillin, he doesn't have to go say a few psukim of psukim de Zimra before he says Kaddish. Why? Because we're talking about a very small pause, and such a small pause, the time it takes to put on the talis and tefillin, that does not constitute a hefsik that you should have to go ahead and say psukim of psukim de Zimra over again before you say Kaddish. Continues the Mishnah of Inira, and it seems to me, says the Chavetz Chaim, and here things get a little bit complicated, and we have to halt the cup. We have to keep track of what the Mishnah says. Vinira, to be yochid. When we're talking about a yochid, so again, what's the case over here? The case is that somebody didn't have talis and tefillin. He davened the pesukah de Zimra. He finished Yishtabach. He's holding between Yishtabach and Kaddish and Baruch Hu and the beginning of Berchus Kriyashmar. He's allowed to be mafsik to put on his talis and tefillin. Why? Because we said that this is Tzarchei Mitzvah, and for Tzarchei Mitzvah you're allowed to be mafsik. So he's definitely allowed to put on his talis and tefillin. But, says the Mishnah we have to fine-tune exactly what the case is. Venire, Debe Yachid, when we're talking about an individual, a member of the Tzibur, who is faced with this scenario, and we're saying he's allowed to put on the talis and tefillin after Yishtabach and before the beginning of Berchus Kriyishma, Mayri ba'ofen shi'ya yocha ligbar anachas talis and tefillin, kaidem shi'ya giyash li'ach tzibar la'amin yehesh be'raba u'baruchu. Says the Chavetz Chaim, when we say that a member of the tzibar could put on his talis and tefillin between Yishtabach and Berchus Kriyishma, it means that he knows he has enough time to get his talis and tefillin on before the chazan is going to get up to Yeheshmei Rabbah in Kaddish and before he's going to get up to Baruch Hu after Kaddish. Oi, or alternatively, Shekvar Shoma Kaddish Baruch Hu. Or maybe this individual already heard Kaddish and Baruch Hu. Maybe this fellow was learning Dafyoimi in the shul and by the previous minion, he already heard a Kaddish and a Baruch Hu. He was sitting there learning Daf Yaimi when the previous minion finished Psuka de Zimra, and the Chazan said Yishtabach, and then Chazi Kaddish, and then Baruch Hu. So he already heard Kaddish and Baruch Hu. What's the point that he already heard it? There's a Chiv to hear Kaddish and Baruch Hu. There's a Chiv to hear seven Kaddishim every day, and to hear Baruch Hu every day. You have to be yoitza that chiv. Now, says the Mishnah again, when we say that you could put on your talis and tefillin after Yishtabach, in the break between Yishtabach and the beginning of Berchus Kriyashma, that's only in one of two cases. Either you know that you're going to finish putting on your talis and tefillin before the Chazid gets up to Amen Yehesh Be'Rabba, so then you're going to be Yoytze Kaddish and Baruch Hu, because apparently what it takes to be Yoytze Kaddish, so to speak, the Iker of Kaddish is that Amen Yehesh Be'Rabba. So if you finished putting on your Talis and Tefillin in time to say Amen Yehesh Be'Rabba and in time to say Baruch Hu, so everything is good. You said Pesukah De Zimra, you finished Yishtabach, you got your Talis and Tefillin on, which we were allowed to do because it's Tzarche Mitzvah, and then you got Kaddish and you got Baruch Hu. Everything is wonderful. Or, alternatively, Maybe you don't have to worry about being Yoitze Kaddish and Baruch Hu because you heard Kaddish and Baruch Hu at the previous minion. Says the Mishnah, we must be talking about one of those two cases. Why? The Ilavachi, we're at the end of the first wide line here in the Mishnah, because says the Chavetz Chaim, the Ilavachi, if we're not talking about one of those cases, so then what? So then what's the fellow going to do? He's going to put on his talis and tefillin, and he's going to be in the middle of putting on his tefillin when the Shlech Tzibah gets up to Amen Yehesh Be'Rabba. What is he going to do? We know that you're not allowed to be mafsik 
from the time that you make the first bracha on the shalyad, the halun lahanyach tefillin, until after you finish putting on the shalroish, you're not allowed to be mafsik. So how is he going to answer Amen Yesh Be'er Abba? Oh, so you'll tell me, maybe he won't answer Amen Yesh Be'er Abba, but he'll do what we learned earlier in Hilchas Tefillin that you're supposed to do. He'll be quiet, and he'll have kavana Amen Yesh Be'er Abba Mavarak Lala Olme Omaya, Shemeya Ka'ina, he'll listen with Kavana. We have the Allah of Shemeya Ka'ina, so that will be as if he said Amen Yesh Be Rabba, and he'll be Yoytze Kaddish and Baruch with Shemeya Ka'ina. The Chavetz Chaim is saying, no, Lechatchil, you can't do that. That's only Bidyeved. So you can't go to put your Talos and Trillin on between Yishtabach and the beginning of Berchus Kriyashma if you know that you're going to have to rely on the B'dyeved of Shemei HaKoyne to be Yoytze Kaddish and Baruch So again, therefore says the Chavetz Chaim, when we say that the individual could put on his Talos and Trillin between Yishtabach and the beginning of Berchus Kriyashma, that's only if he knows he's going to be able to finish putting them on before the Shlech Tzibur gets to Amen Yehishmei Rabbah. Let's see it inside. The Ilavachi, because if it's not that way, we learned the Simon Chafes if Yud, the also Lahafsik ben Ashel Yad Lahashel Roish, that you're not allowed to be Mafsik between putting on the Shel Yad and the Shel Roish. Afilu Lane Samen Yehishbe Rabu Barachu. Elo, what do you have to do? Shoisik, you have to be quiet. Vishaymeya, and you listen. Umechavid Lamasha Oimrim, and you have Kavana for what the Tibur is saying. Amen Yehishbe Rabu. Vizay ain't not a lasseske, Lechatchila, Lotzeis Pose, but you can't do this Lechatchila. In order to be Yitzhak Kaddish Baruch Hu, I feel the Lamai the Kaimel on Shemei Kaina. Even though we pass in Shemei Kaina, still you're not allowed to rely on that Lachatchila as a way of being Yitzhak Kaddish and Baruch Hu. Kidemulchak bebrachas chafalaf on the base betoises dibur amaschel ad ayin chum uberashah. Oh, so now says the Mishnah So what taka do you do? Let's say you're stuck in a scenario. Well, you're not going to be able to get the Talzit filling on in time for Amen Yehesh Rabba. What do you do then? Now, a lot of people will be thinking to themselves, okay, so what's the big deal? If you see that you're not going to make it for Amen Yehesh Rabba, so fine, so don't put the Talzit filling on. Wait until the Shleach Tzibur finishes Kaddish. Wait until he says Baruch Hu. You'll answer Baruch Hu, and then you'll put on your Talzit filling. And after you put on your Talzit filling, you'll start Berchus Kriyishma. No, 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 no. We'll see that that's not so simple. Says the Mishnah <clears throat> in this scenario, yes, it's better to wait to put on the tefillin until the Shliach Tzibah finishes Baruch Hu, and you'll talk to put them on after the Chazid says Baruch Hu. But, but what are you going to do about the brachas? The Mishnah Brewer is going to say something now in Ois Cotton Yud Gimel that a lot of people are not aware of. And that is, most people, I think, would think, you said Pesuket Zimra, you said Yishtabach, now you want to put on your tefillin. And you don't have enough time to get them on before I'm in Yesh Merab. So you'll say, okay, big deal. So I'll wait until after Baruch Hu. I'll put on my tefillin with the bracha after Baruch Hu. What's the big deal? I didn't start Berchus Kriyishma yet. So after I hear Baruch Hu and I answer Baruch Hu, I'll put on my trillin with a bracha, and then I'll David Viter. I'll say, I'll say Berchus Kriyishma. Mr. Buru is going to say, you can't do that. Let's see the Mr. Buru over here, always cutting your gimel. Well, we didn't do it inside in the Ramah yet. Let's go to the Ramah, second line of the Ramah. Avo ben Kaddish le Baruch Hu. To be mafsik between Kaddish and Baruch Hu, lo yafsik b'shum davar. You can't be mafsik between the Chatzik Kaddish and the Baruch Hu. The Chol Shekein she lo yafsik la'achas she'amar ha'shlech t'shibor Baruch Hu k'edim shemaschil and berchas yoytzer. Says the Ramah, you're not allowed to be mafsik between Kaddish and Baruch Hu. And Chol Shekein, you're not allowed to be mafsik between Baruch Hu and the beginning of Berchus Kriyishma. Why not? I'll tell you why. Because when the Shliach Tzibur says, Baruch Hu es Hashem HaMavayrach, what is he saying? He's talking to the Tzibur, and he's instructing the Tzibur. 
Baruch Hu Hashem HaMavorach, bench the Rabbeinu Shalom, bless the one who is blessed. Baruch Hu Es Hashem, bench Hashem HaMavorach, who is gebenched. <clears throat> now, everybody answers <clears throat> with a bracha. And they say, Baruch Hashem HaMavorach Lailam Vayet. Gebenched is the Rabbeinu Shalom. <clears throat> who is gebenched? Lailam Vayet. So you think that you are Mikhaim, that you fulfilled the instruction of the Shliach Tzibor Baruchu. You think that you fulfilled it by saying Baruch Hashem HaMavorach. You did not. The Mishnah is going to tell us that the Iker Tzivoy, the Iker command of the Shliach Tzibor Baruch Es Hashem HaMavorach is going on the Baruch of Yitzir Oru Varech That's what it's going on. Therefore, you can't be mafsik between Baruchu and the beginning of Berchus Kriyashma. Because the Shlech Tzibur said Baruchu, which means, say Baruch HaTashem Elkeinu Melech HaOlam Yitzhar Arur Baruch HaYishach Aisei Shalom Avar Yitzhakoyl. So you can't be mafsik between Baruchu and when you start saying the bracha of Yitzhar Arur. So now, if you want to put on your tefillin after the Shlech Tzibur already said Baruchu, you can't make the brachas. The Mishdaru is going to tell us, put on the tefillin without brachas and make the brachas on the tefillin when? Between Yoytzer HaMa'orois and Avarabba. Because that's considered Bein HaProkim. And Bein HaProkim, you're allowed to make the bracha on tefillin. So wait until you say Baruch HaTah Hashem Yoytzer HaMa'orois and then be Mamashbish in the Shalyad, be Mamashbish in the Shalrosh and make the brachas then. Very interesting. Let's see it inside. <clears throat> the Ramah said that you can't be mafsik ben kaddish lebaruchu. Ritzayin alaymar. What the Ramah means to say is misha shehischel kaddish. From the time that the chazan begins kaddish, you cannot be mafsik. The hakaddish lebaruchu gam kein shayich because the kaddish is attached to the davening in both directions. The Kaddish goes back on the Psukim of Psukim de Zimra, but it's also attached going forward to Baruchu. Vayin b'achreinim shekosvu. And take a look at the achreinim who write, Debein Kaddish le Baruchu, between Kaddish and Baruchu, Dinoi l'chol mili ki bein aprokim. That point in time is considered bein aprokim. Vitekef achar Baruchu, but once the Shleach Tzibu says Baruchu, before he starts the brach of Yitzir Aru Varei Choshech, have a Emtzah Perik. That's considered Emtzah Prokim. That's considered to be in middle of a Perik, in middle of a chapter. We are not allowed to be Masik. The Misham Ve'elechu Kas Chalas Yitzir, because from that point on, from Baruchu is already considered the beginning of Yitzir Aru Varei Choshech. Because the main intent of the Chazan, when he tells the Tzibur, that's an instruction that they should bench the Rabbi Shalom with the Bracha of Yitzer Oyer. Al Kain, therefore, says the Mishnabur, here's the punchline Al Kain. Bain Yachid Ubain Shlach Tzibur. Whether we're dealing with an individual in the Tzibur or we're dealing with the Chazan. Im Loim is Daman Loy Talas Achehiskel Kaddish. If he doesn't get a Talas to put on until after the Chazan already started Kaddish, Yachar Lehisatif by Tekif, he could put on the Talas between Kaddish and Baruchu. Avalo Yavari Chadlachar Atfila. But he can't be mafsik with a bracha on the talus until after Shemayna Esrei. So he could put on the talus, but he can't make a bracha on the talus until after Shemayna Esrei. And then he should feel the tzitzit and make a bracha on them. Utvilin, and if it comes to tvilin, im nizdamen loy kaidem baruchu, if you get the tefillin between Kaddish and Baruch Hu, Yochel Levarech Aleihen, because between Kaddish and Baruch Hu is Bein HaProkim, and you're allowed to make a bracha on tefillin, Bein HaProkim. Levi Mashi Eskimo Achreinu B'Simit Samach Vav, Yochel Levarech Aleihen, Bein HaProkim. 
But if you don't get tefillin until you already said baruchu, now you can't make a brach on them because you can't be mafsik between baruchu and baruch atashem lekedem alach ha'olam yitzir aru varichayshech. Ella, what should you do? Yam yichain b'loy bracha, put on the tefillin without a bracha. Ukishi agia kaidem avaraba, and when you're between yitzir am oiros and avaraba, you mashpeish behen. Feel them the Avarchalayan and make a bracha on them because that's already Bain Aprakim. And over there you can make a bracha. Fa'in Basamach. Says the Mishra is cutting your Dalit. The Rama said, certainly you can't be mafsik. Um from after the Shlitzibra said Baruchu to the beginning of Birchas Yaitzer Ur. Lachasha Amar says the Mishra. It's not only the shots that can't be mafsik. Even an individual in the tzibur, you think, what, I'm free. Well, what's my problem? I heard Baruch Hu, but I didn't start saying Yitzhar. I can't be mafsik to make a brach on my tefillin? No. Take a look at the sif katan yud gimel that we just did. You can't be mafsik to make a brach on the tefillin after you heard baruchu from the shliach tzibur before you start the brach of yitzerar, because the baruchu was a command to say yitzerar. Now the mishnah is going to say, but realize the yachid that we're talking about over here, who we're saying cannot make a brach on his tefillin after baruchu, that's a yachid who's holding by baruchu. In other words, he said psukid zimra. He said Yishtabach, and the next thing he has to say in Davening is But he didn't have tefillin, so he wants to put on his tefillin first. If he already heard the Chazit say Baruchu, he can't make a brach on the tefillin, because he's being mafsik between Baruchu and Baruch HaTashem Elkeinu Melech HaOlam, Yaitzer Aruv But how about if you just showed up in Shul, and you're going to still, you're going to Daven Pesuk in Zimra now, so you're not holding my bruch as Kriyishma. Then the Mishnah is going to say, then you're allowed to make a bruch on your tulin. Because you're not being mafsik between Baruch Hu and Yitzhar. Anyway, you have to say Psukid Zimra. Says the Mishnah Baruch. This whole complex halacha of Sif Yud Gimel is only talking about the case of Sif Yud Gimel, which is you're a member of the Tzibur that's ready to David bruch as Kriyishma. We're talking about an individual who already said Yishtabach. And the very next part of davening that he's up to is the brach of Yitzhar. But if this member of the Tzibur is still holding a middle of de Zimra, and now he got Tzvillin to put on, or if he just showed up in Shul now, and he plans on davening in the correct order. And he's not going to skip psuke de zimra of leftayak v'bichas yaitzer and start his davening with bichas kriyshma. V'shama kadishu baruchu, and he already heard kadish and baruchu. And dina bazek emtza perek. We don't give him the din of emtza perek and tell him that he can't make a brach on tefillin. He could. He could certainly put on his talis and tefillin and make a bracha on them, even though he already heard baruchu. Okay. A little complex. You could use some chazara, but there it is. Okay. That concludes Simon Nun Dalit, and now we begin Simon Nun Hey. Dine Kaddish Talachas of Kaddish Uboichaf Bey Seifim. And here we have 22 Seifim. If you take a look at Yarach HaShulchan, very beautiful language in Yarach HaShulchan. Yarach HaShulchan tells us that Kadesh is an unbelievable tefillah. It's a tefillah that's Kadesh, that's Noira. It's awesome. It's a tefillah that was Niskan by Anche Knesset Akdola. Anche Knesset Akdola compiled the, the tefillah of Kadesh, and they did it after Churban Bayes Rishon. It's a tefillah over the Chilol Shem Shamayim of Churban Bayes Rishon. And we're mispalled to the Rabbeinu Shalom in reaction to Chorban Bayis Rishon. We're mispalled Yiskadal Yiskade Shmei Rabba that the Rabbeinu Shalom's name should once again be made great and be made Kadosh. 
and we're mispowled over the Golos, and we're mispowled for the Geula, and we say, Amen Yehishmei Rabba. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, very chosh of a tefillah with a lot of kedusha. Says the Mechaber Yisif Aleph, Oymrim Kaddish. After Yishtabak, we say, Chatzik Kaddish. Ve'en Oymrim Oysoy B'pachas Me'asara Zecharim. We can't say Kaddish with less than a minion of males. B'nei Chorin, not Avadim. Gedolim, they have to be adults. Shevius Shtei Sairois. They have to have reached physical maturity of having two pubic hairs. So too, Kedusha and Baruch Hu cannot be said with less than ten. Says the Mishnah Rois, cut an aleph back here and pay hey on a base. Oimrim. Says the Mishnah Rois, a very important halacha that, again, I think a lot of people are not aware of. The same way we find that a person is not supposed to make extra brachas. Right? Bracha she'enetzricha is a big deal. We don't want to make a bracha she'en etzricha. We're always cognizant not to create a situation where we have to make extra brachas. It's not good to be marba in brachas. Kach toiv lemayit pekedeshim. We're supposed to refrain from saying extra kedeshim. Why? So they explain. Because kaddish is a dover kadosh v'noira. It's not something that is to be said lightly. Kaddish is too kadosh to be taken lightly. It's being mishtamish b'sharbet shel melech. You're using the scepter of the king. You use it, when you pick it up, only when you have to pick it up. You touch it, only when you have to touch it. So we don't make extra kedeshim. Vayin b'achreinim, he says, take a look at the achreinim, shekaru tagar, who they call out in, in, a, in a manner of, in a prosecutorial manner. Alzeshen esofim asar b'nei adam, and those who are on the habit of gathering up a minion of ten people, Vaimrim Kama Kadeshim, and they say lots of Kadeshim al Psuke Torah over Psuke Bil Khumish, a Mishnah a Gemara, or they say a Mishnah a Mishnah and they say Kadish Tarabanan, a Gemara and they say Kadish Tarabanan. Says no, that's not good. You're not supposed to pull people together to say extra Kadeshim. If it's an appropriate Kaddish, it's an appropriate Kaddish. You want to make a seam and say Kaddish, that's an appropriate Kaddish. But we don't make extra Kadeshim. Says the Chavaz Chaim, an interesting halacha. Sorry, Yehudim loyazim. If you have ten Yidin who only speak foreign languages, they do not speak Lashon Hakodesh. Shein mi sheyadei b'Lashon Hakodesh lo hitzi oisam yidei chayva. There's nobody there who knows how to say a Kaddish in Lashon Hakodesh in order to be mighty people of their chiv. You chalechav behem yili yoshlech tzibur v'loyim a Kaddish kedusha b'Lashon laz. One of them can actually get up and be a shlech tzibur. And say Kaddish and Kedusha in English or in French. Ice cut and bays. The the Mechaber said Oimrim Kaddish. We say Kaddish. Pirish Achapsuki de Zimra. The Mechaber over here is referring to the Chasi Kaddish that we say after Yishtabach before Baruch. Ubeina Nasara. And you need ten adults to say Kaddish. Shekol davar shebekdusha ki goy kaddish kedusha u baruchu because any davar shebekdusha like kaddish or kedusha or baruchu u kriyas atayra or laning u nesias kapayim or duchening ein oimer moisay bepachas measara you do not recite these things with less than a minion. How do we know this? Shenemar because it says in the pasuk v'nikdashti b'soich b'nei Yisrael. The Rebbe Shalom says I will be sanctified b'soich b'nei Yisrael amongst Kla Yisrael. What does that mean? The Alfinon we learn out Pigzer Shavah, we dash in Pigzer Shavah, Toich Toich, Mi Maraglim. By the Maraglim, the Pasuk says, He bodlu mi Toich ha'eda hara hazois. The Rabbi Yisrael tells Moshe Rabbeinu, separate yourself from this Eda hara, from this evil group of people. So it says, He bodlu, separate yourselves, Mi Toich, from amongst them. That's by the Maraglim. Um, if you take a, um, so he doesn't pre- oh, oh here it is shenemar v'nikdashti b'sayich b'nei Yisrael right it says in 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 vayikra chaf beis the pasuk says v'nikdashti b'sayich b'nei Yisrael. I will be sanctified b'soich b'nei Yisrael. Then we learn on Exerus Shavet Toich Toich. In that pasuk it says v'nikdashti b'soich, 
And by the Meraglim, it says, Mitoich, he badalu mitoich, ha'eda, ha'razais. It refers to the group of the Meraglim as an eda. Now, how many people were there by the Meraglim? How many evil people? Ten. Because in total, there were twelve. But you take out Yeshua and Kalev, Yeshua and Kalev were tzaddikim. So there were ten left. So by the Meraglim, it says, he badalu mitoich, ha'eda. Separate yourself from this group of ten. And then in Vayikra it says, V'niktashti b'soich. I will be sanctified amongst the Bnei Yisrael. We learn out that toich means an eda. An eda is ten. So v'niktashti b'soich Bnei Yisrael means I will be sanctified in a group of ten people. That's how we know that a Dov Hashem Dusha needs ten people. So the Afinam Xer Shavu the Tech Tech member Aglan, the Xevan Masel Leida Razais, Yasi Yeshua the Kalev, Nishar Asaro Kruin Eda. The Chal Akadeshim Shavan Lazer, all of the Kadeshim are equal in this way that they require a group of ten males. I feel Kadish to Rabbanon Chakra Alimud, even a Kadish to Rabbanon that you want to say after a shear. Kasavataz the Taz writes to Be'e Samir as Psuke de Zimra that when we're saying Psuke de Zimra, ain't Sarah Hasara. You don't need a minion to say Psuke de Zara. Even if somebody says Psukit de Zimra alone, be a chidus. If ten people show up when it's time to say Kaddish, if the Yishtabach Taibakach, that's enough. You don't have to have the minion when you say the Psukit de Zimra that the Kaddish is going back on. You only need the minion when you're ready to say the Kaddish. The Chain is similarly. If you started Mayriv without a minion, and then ten people showed up, but it's time to say Chatsi Kaddish before Shmai Nezrei, Yachalayim Ra Kaddish, you could say Kaddish. The Chain Bechol Limu Chadam Loime Psukim Ayagada. So true if somebody is sitting and learning Psukim or Divrei Ayagada, Agada to Gemaris, Ayba Amira Salenu, Ayba Amira Ashrei Shekai de Mincha, Ayba Amira Stilim Babaiker. If you did any of these things without a minion, then this damn tekef minion, and then a minion shows up immediately when you're ready to say Kaddish, you're allowed to say Kaddish. The Magen Avram seems to disagree. The Chain may agrab the Simon Reish Lamadal and Muchach come Magen Avram. Al Cain therefore is Kimo HaAchreinim. The Achreinim reach a conclusion and they have a consensus. That the best thing would be before you say the Kaddish to say some Psukim. The Yomru Kaddish. This stands in contrast to women or Avadim Kenanim or Ktanim or Marinu children. And we're going to stop over here with Ice Cotton Dalad. Thank you so much for joining me for Liman Atar. Discuss of Liman Atar should be making against Klai Yisrael. The Rabbi Yisrael should send Yeshua Sefor's Parnasset Shadruchim to all those in need, and we should be zaykh to see the BS called Tzedek, Bemherav Yamenu Amen. Be well.